In this presentation, we will take a look at payroll tax forms after payroll has been run, which includes a 401k plan and employer matching. So we can take a look at the difference between these payroll reports and those run before having a 401k plan with no employer matching and before that not having any 401k plan at all within QuickBooks. Here we are. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. On the home page, we currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and open windows list. We're going to start off with the reports drop down and go to the company and financial and then go down to the balance sheet standard. Within the balance sheet, I'm going to change the date to 123118. That's going to be the year end we're working on. Of course, the checking account is negative. We just have those checks that were written. We have the payroll liabilities and the equity section. And so we won't get into a lot of detail here. Just want to show that report as one of the main reports that we'll be going back to. Then we'll go to reports drop down. We'll go to company and financial. Take a look at the profit and loss report. And we'll change the dates from 010118 to 123118. And once again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but you can see that everything's being grouped together in the payroll expense, the one account for the payroll that we've been processing. So it's all the gross pay. It's going to be included in there as well as payroll taxes. Now let's run the process, the payroll reports, the 941 for the quarter that we've got so far and the form uh, W2 and W3. So we're going to go to the employees up top, we're going to go down to payroll uh, forms and process payroll forms. So we're going to start with the 941s. So we're in the 941s. This is in the paid version. We can't really do this in the manual version, uh, the unpaid version. So we're going to go into the 941, create that form. We're going to start off with the end of the third quarter. So that's th that ends on 03-31-18. Uh, so March 31st, 2018 and okay. So we're going to run this information. We're going to go next down here so we can see the actual payroll report. Now here's the payroll report. You'll note that it hasn't changed here. And we, we just ran the payroll for the third month, January, February, and March. You would think that March would be in here. But note that we ran the check for March uh, in the next months and the payroll is going to be on a cash basis system So just be aware of that when we process the payroll It's going to be when the check is issued as to when we're going to report that information on the 941s and uh, So we're going to have that timing issue. So I want to demonstrate that now We'll show some problems later where we will simplify this process So we won't deal with that timing issue and concentrate on the payroll but you when we also have to keep aware of the cash basis versus the accrual basis. So I'm going to close this report and let's take a look at the next month. So I'm going to close this back out and let's see if we can run the payroll, go back to the payroll center and run the 941 again back in the payroll center and run it for the next quarter. January, January, February, March is the first quarter. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June. So let's go for uh, the end of June, 06318. So June 30th, 2018 and OK and see what we get for that pay period. We're going to say next and then scroll down. So now we have this one, the one pay rule that we ran here for the one employee will be included here. So again, just be aware of that because you would think that we ran the pay roll for three months, January, February, March, and it should be in the first pay period, which it would be if we had issued the check within uh, that month. But we issued the check the day after, and that's just an example to kind of show that timing difference in this case. That's a difference you'll have to be aware of when you go from an accrual method to a cash method, and you'll have to make adjustments for it because the payroll reporting here, at least for the 941s, will be on uh, the cash method. So here we have the, the wages that we ran for that one check, and then you can see that the wages down here for Social Security and Medicare are different. Why? because this amount is being reduced not by the employer portion but by the employee portion so it's going to be the gross pay minus uh, the 401k that the employee put in this is including the gross pay 
still not including the 401k, which pay, was paid over and above the gross pay. Then we have the calculations for the, the 0.124 and the 0.029. That's twice employer and employee portion for Social Security and Medicare. This being twice what we would see on that one paycheck, which is all that's included for this quarter now on uh, on the employer and employee portion. In other words, this includes the employer and employee portion. <laughs> And then if we sum those up, that's going to give us the total liabilities. We haven't paid anything yet. We're not processing the liabilities in this example. So we owe the entire thing now. In, in practice, of course, we would process the liability, and this should be just an informational return. So let's close this out and take a look at the W-2 and W-3. So I'm going to close this back out. We're going to go back into our report center, scroll down to the W-2 and W-3, where the file forms W-2, W-3. And we're going to change the date to 2018 and say OK and OK. And then we'll process this. I'm going to review and edit. We'll scroll down and say next and next and next. And let's just take a look at our forms here. So here we have our mock uh, W-2 form for our one employee. Now this, of course, is going to give us the data for year to date, which includes three payrolls. But it's not one quarter. This is would be what for the entire year if this is all we had with, with those first three paychecks. So we'll see here once again that the 11781 for the three paychecks is different, lower than what the Social Security and Medicare wages are. And that's because we took the gross pay minus what was taken out in box 12, which is the employee portion. So if, again, if we took the 12187.5 minus the 11781.5, we get the 406 the employee portion that was taken out of the paycheck and thereby we get to reduce the the earnings by that also note that however that this number well note first that the medicare is actually more accurate in terms of earnings for the employee because it doesn't reduce it by what the employee gets to really keep it's in their own this is in their own 401k plan also note that the employer portion isn't included in any of these in terms of the 401k plan which was matched over and above what's being reported here. So really, none of these are really accurate in terms of actual what was earned because the, 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 mat, the, the amount that was given by the employer to the employee over and above gross pay isn't included in any of these, any of these numbers. So just be aware of that, that these, these numbers, when thinking about actual earnings, actual value being received by the employee, they're, they're kind of deceiving in some ways. We've got to understand the difference between the two, especially the first one, because it'll be reduced largely by a 401k plan. So then we've got the federal income tax, uh, the Social Security, and the Medicare. These two matching, well, this should match what's on the 941s if we were to add both of them up for the, for the first and second quarter now, because that's where we're at. And we had the first and second quarter because the 941s are on a cash basis, and we wrote the check the month after it was run, even though we've only had the first quarter, January, February, March of actual payroll being processed. And that just depends on when we write the check uh, on where that will be grouped. In terms of the total for the year, it is what it is because uh, those three months are for the entire year showing up here now. So the federal income would include what was reported for those three checks and on the 941s. Social Security and Medicare is going to be what was on the 941s, but we'd have to double this to, to match out what's included on the first and second two quarters so far of the 941s because this is only the employee side. And then, of course, we have the, the employee portion that is reported here on the 401k retirement plan checked off because we have the retirement plan, the SDI, and the state wages and withholdings. If we say next and next and we go to the W-3, remember that the W-3 will be much the same. We only have one employee at this time, the W-3, in essence, summing up, at least on the numbers standpoint, uh, all of the W-2s. So it would be like a W-3 for if all the employees were grouped into one person, which they are only one person right now. So they would all be pretty much the same for these, these numbers. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.